Hi, my name is Sarah, the Duchess of York, and I'm on In Her Words podcast. We were at the point of talking about, have you found Sarah through your voice of writing? Yes. I escaped into uh, uh, women's empowerment and my own empowerment and into literacy. And I am um, uh, passionate, is I could say obsessed with writing. Okay. I, I, I It's my genre to get my ideas out yeah and my and my views out and my voice out through my characters so when um you know one of the things that we've heard a lot from talking to other writers you should write what you know so it makes sense mm -hmm. exactly and uh, carolyn reedy a reedy was a great friend of mine head of uh simon schuster ceo of simon schuster i loved her and i used to go and see her and say carolyn come on i want a novel please and she'd say just go away and write your own life it is a novel and you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. We've, I've been lucky enough to live every girl's dream. And sometimes I have to put BGPOs on. Do you know what they are? I don't. Mm -hmm. Big girl pants on. Ah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and you have to, and you have to get courage. And when all men doubt you, Raja Kipling, if, yeah. if you can keep your head when all men doubt you and blame it on you and keep going. How have you, how do you ground yourself? It's, you know, you've, you've had. Humor. Okay. Totally humor and teamwork and loyalty and kindness. If I honestly, I can't have anyone with me who's not stratospherically kind because I'm so gentle and it says a lot about my team yeah. that they must love about themselves because otherwise they wouldn't be able to be with me because we have to have kindness in the team. And if we don't have it and respect. And if we don't have it, I, I I can't. I have to live like that. Yeah. Uh, KQ is my, I'm working with a scientist, Donna Young, on bringing out KQ for children, kindness quotas. So you have EQ, IQ, and KQ. Oh, wow. And because you can teach kindness. And we need to teach children kindness. Well, it's something that's missing in yeah. the world right now. Yes. And I think it's something that would be so important. And so I think people are looking for it right now mm -hmm. based on what's happening all around us. A, hun a hundred percent that I've noticed when the refugees come over the Ukraine border there's I'm talking now in particular about three to five year old who yeah. I know called David and Sophie and their mom it was four in the morning and the husband went to war she thought there were fireworks going off and she picked up David and Sophie and ran 4 a.m out of the house with nothing Sophie is very autistic and she's in the middle of Ukraine. What was she supposed to do? Where was she supposed to go? And she ran into the cellars and into places just to hide from the bombs with the water and the rats and it's cold, snowing outside and fireworks, bombs. And uh, how do you describe to a five and a three-year-old that their dad, where's daddy? Where's home? What's happening? And she ran on. She's called Olga, mum. Mum's called Olga. She ran on. She got to Warsaw eventually took her seven days and I met her in Warsaw I can show you a photograph of her and I just it's, <laughs> every single day I am so grateful to Olga because I think about her and I think about her life right now and I think we've got to help her bring up her children without fear because yeah. if there are 85.7 million displaced people in the world why are we not teaching more kindness, more joy, so that we make a better planet for them, so that they don't grow up believing fear, war, violence, drugs, and all these things. So, yes, I'm working with Montessori schools. I have um, 27,000 schools, and I'm their ambassador. I work with them. And we're building a, a Education for the Future Fund in order to bring schools to every single border around Ukraine and also Yemen, Syria, Afghanistan, anywhere, anywhere there is a refugee camp or a displaced person. That's incredible. Thank yeah. you for doing that. And, Thank you. And creating such an incredible movement. Yeah. You know, you've always given that voice to people, you know, and you've talked a lot and you've done a lot of charity work when it comes to education and literacy for children. Mm, yes, you know, you're also, um, you know, as you had mentioned, you've written so many children's books. It's like it's such a passion of yours. Yeah. Can we dive into that a little bit in terms of where that started and, and how you started it? <laughs> so during the pandemic, uh, 
I wrote my first novel. And then I realized that there's so many children out there yeah. that need to read a book or to hear a story. And they're alone and lonely and sad. And I've always said that, that all they need is a little bit of levity. So I went on YouTube, started my own uh, YouTube channel called Storytime with Fergie and Friends. Yes. And it's three to six-year-olds and I make a set and then I'm very silly on the set. And uh, I remember sending it all to hospitals and children's charities all over the world. And uh, one of the books that Los Angeles Hospital asked me to read was the Winky Winky Stinky Wonky Donkey. <laughs> and, and, and I was sort of thinking, What? Okay, off we go. It was the most famous book and they wanted me to read it, so I did. And then uh, the Ugandan uh, Children's Hospital and the most incredible development centre wanted me to read The Little Hen and so and the Out of the Wall Gang, the Hole in the Wall Gang asked me to read, you know, so many different books. So I did. And in doing it, I have still gone on doing it. So I do it every single day. Even today, now, I've t I've put one in the can for today. Oh, that's fantastic. Mm. In terms of writing children's books, what what was the impetus for you to, to really dive into writing your own? Well, every single book of mine, all my 82 books, are all semi-autobiographic. So in 1989, I got my f helicopter license and I flew Budgie the helicopter. I flew a helicopter, which looked like a budgery car. So I put on my talking hat. Okay. And I flew my helicopter, single engine jet ranger, and I chased rabbits down the runway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I was explaining to somebody that night who happened to be the leading literary agent in this country for children's. And I didn't know. I was at a dinner, you know, and uh, he said, oh, that sounds very interesting. Why don't you write a children's book? So I wrote it down. And that was in 89. We come, became number one with Budgie the Helicopter in this country, in America. And... Uh, Went on Fox uh, Saturday morning, 9 a.m., animation. Six, uh, there, are, there are 60, I think there's 62 licenses and um, about 30, 42 animation episodes on YouTube right now. Anyway, Budgie the Helicopter. Then I went on from Budgie the Helicopter to, to, to then, I, then I really threw myself into Little Red. Yeah. And Little Red is very important to me. Yeah. And uh, she survived, uh, she survived, she, she, she was for the children of Oklahoma City and the bombing went off in, on the, in April 1995 and uh, I went, flew to Oklahoma City, went up to the first responders and up to the intensive care and I said, what can I do? They said, save our, save our grandchildren. This was to Dolores, save my, save my grandson. And that was PJ, who I still keep in touch with, both of them. And uh, I then realized, I went to lunch, drew Little Red on a napkin, took the napkin to F.O. Schwartz, made her up into a doll. And uh, and she's in Oklahoma City Museum right now. Oh. And then uh, I started Chances for Children. I wanted to thank the American people for giving me my life. And by that I mean, I wanted to say, you gave me a job after my divorce, you gave me strength, you gave me confidence, and you you gave me a second chance. So I wanted to thank you all. And so I started the foundation to thank, to help the children of the future. So live the brand, educate, educate, educate. And then uh, Little Red was in, the, Howard Lutnick, Howard Nelson Lutnick gave me uh, an office in the 101st floor of the World Trade Center in the North Tower. And Little Red is a rag doll. She stands at around about, I don't know, 15 inches. And uh, she came down from 101 floors and she was found in the rubble. And CNN filmed it and said, look, a child's doll. And Larry King said, no, that's Fergie's Little Red. And she stands for children's rights all over the world. And from her, I went on and built uh, mm, 156 schools, 56 from the ground up. That's incredible. Incredible. In Africa. That's amazing. Yes, it's incredible, really. Uh, not, no, no, I'm not saying I'm incredible. Little Red did it. Yeah. But I just really believe in giving children the right to a better planet. 